Hi, and welcome back to my channel. If it looks like we're in the middle of a Zoom meeting, it's because we are. I am having issues with my webcam, and for some reason, the only way I can make it work is by turning it on in a Zoom call. So I'm in a Zoom meeting by myself so that I can get the webcam to work. I do not know what's going on. Anyway, I'm not going to be the center of the whole thing because we're going to be talking about Scribd and I have quite a few websites to show you and just information in general that I found out. So we're going to talk about what Scribd is, kind of where it came from. First of all, at the beginning, let me just say it is pronounced Scribd. I watched a video from the creator and he refers to it as Scribd. I know I've heard a couple people say Scribd and Scribd. It is Scribd. So, few questions. What is Scribd? Is it everywhere? Like, is it in every country? Is it worth it? Those are the things we're going to talk about and more. So, sit back and enjoy the Zoom meeting that we're all in together. Okay. So first, I'm not going to be looking at the camera either. So maybe you guys don't even need to see me on the camera. Anyway, I'm looking at my other screen over here. But we're going to answer what is Scribd. This literally came from their website. I mean, I'm on their website. So I am going to give you guys this link down below. I will also link any other account that I go to or any other website that I check out. So they do have their mission, their vision, and a, quite a few core values. And then this video from their co-founder and CEO, Trip, Trip Adler, he's the one that said Scribd. That's why I know it's pronounced Scribd. I thought this was kind of cute, cool, like the history of Scribd. So it originally came from Trip's father, who was trying to publish medical information, like a medical journal or medical articles, and he couldn't find anywhere that was publishing it. So they were like, this is just going to be a platform for people to publish whatever they want to publish. So whatever they put on here, we will publish, and that's how it's going to go. And so that is how it started. Then it kind of evolved from there where people were like, well, I'm a writer, and I would like to put my self-published fiction books on there and other things like that. And they were like, Okay, that sounds good. And so it just kind of kept growing from there. There have been some growing pains. There were copyright lawsuits that were filed and eventually the charges were dropped. But it seemed like people were sharing things that they did not own the copyright to more so than Scribd was going to get those things. However, Scribd is ultimately responsible for the things that are on its platform. So clearly they came to some kind of understanding because now publishers give them access to big chunks of their libraries, whether it is digital or audio or some other way, they give them access to it now. So they have articles and podcasts and audiobooks and ebooks all the way up to April 2022 is the last thing on their timeline where they further expand their leadership team by appointing a chief legal officer and general counsel role. So then they have all these publishing partners down here that they've worked with. And then there's fun facts down here, which this one is the answer to one of our questions. They have content in over 20 languages. So you can use Scribd in any country that will allow the Scribd app to be downloaded in that country. However, there are only 20 languages or over 20 languages, which sounds like a lot, but not a lot. So if you can't read slash understand a lot in English, um, I don't know why you would be watching my video, but if not, then you probably will not get the most out of Scribd and maybe it won't be worth it for you. So I guess first let's talk about a couple other questions that I've seen as I've just been researching Scribd along the internet. So the main thing is that Scribd says here, Okay, Scribd gives you access to millions of ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, podcasts, and more all in one place for one price. And so it says that you have an unlimited amount of books per month that you can read. Now that is in direct contrast to say an Audible where you get a certain number of credits and you use those credits. And so 
they are saying that they're, you're never going to reach your limit. So they can say that it's unlimited. However, if you have used a script, then you know that's not quite the case. And what they tell you, because people automatically are like, what does this available soon mean? And so it says, you'll see a title that says listed as available soon. And I think this is what annoys a lot of people because their available soon means when you reach your next payment date. So like mine is on the 22nd of every month. And so it doesn't take me long after the 22nd that I get a notification that says these titles will be available after the 22nd. Now I did pay attention this time because I was filming. I knew I was going to be filming this video. So on November the 22nd is when my month rolled over for Scribd. And it is now December the 7th when I'm filming this. And today is the day that I hit my whatever the limit is. And now some of my titles say available soon. <laughs> available soon. So all it means is that according to whatever contract Scribd has signed with certain publishers, and it does seem to be almost all publishers across the board. So maybe this is just in their standard contract language or whatever, but either the organization, the, the publishing company, or Scribd is making a determination about which books are new enough or popular enough that they can only be accessed a certain number of times. This is, of course, my theory about the number of times for some of these, but here is what I know. So if you follow my channel at all, you know that in December, I am reading J.D. Robb's In Death series, and this is probably a good one to look at. Also, we'll talk about Stephen King in a second, but J.D. Robb's library of books in this one series and it's the only thing that she's written as J.D. Robb I think that might not be true but I think it is and there are 55 books in this series so when I go on my script right now I have access to all 50 of the first 50 books and the last five books say available soon so that means if I were already caught up with this I would be waiting until the 22nd of December before those books would be released to me. Now, this is the wording that they give you only. When people have asked about it, this is what they say. When books or audiobooks become temporarily unavailable on Scribd, you'll see any titles that you've saved, they're also, they have to be ones you've saved, listed in the available soon section, along with the date of exactly when they will become fully available to you. Now, I love that it says on the date, because so far from what I've been able to discover online, the date that they give you is when your thing rolls over. So it's your next time you are charged for using Scribd. We understand this can be frustrating, especially if it happens with an old favorite or the exciting new release you were looking forward to diving into next. Now, an old favorite to me seems like a popular book, even though it's not new. And then the new release is a new release. That's why I think that it's based on popularity and it's based on release date. If you're looking forward to certain titles becoming fully available again, you'll still have access to a broad variety of content in our library. So what they're saying, this may change the schedule in which you read the exact books you're after. Now, I feel like if you're just a regular book reader, and I'm saying that not, not a booktuber, like if you're not doing this for content, or if you're not a type of person who plans out your TBR to fit into a... I don't know, a challenge of some kind that you're doing, like a readathon or something like that, then this probably doesn't bother you at all. You're like, that's fine. There are plenty of other books that I can keep reading until I get to my new date and then I'll just pick that book up then. And I will say, there has never been a case where the 22nd got here and my thing rolled over and I could not access those books. They have always been available on the 22nd, just like they said they would. So that they're not lying about that, but it is when you pay the money again. Okay. Our search and browsing experience is specifically designed to help you find titles that are readily and fully, fully available for you to dive into. So there have been some issues with that where people have gotten some books that had, they have been, that they have saved and they've been put into the other side. And then they have gone through and 
searched again for like new releases or popular books or whatever and they don't get any showing at the top and it's because all of those new releases are now in the coming later phase or not until the 22nd in my case. So it does say that the browse feature is to help you find books that are available right now. So what that could also mean is if you search on the first day of your month with Scribd. So if I searched on the 22nd, I might find more new releases available than if I waited and searched a couple of weeks later after I had already read on Scribd. At Scribd, we want to be a place that book lovers of all types can call their personal on-the-go library. We know that we're not the only reading subscription around, and it's our sincere hope that we'll always have something new and exciting for you to read. We're constantly adding new content to the library and are always happy to hear from our readers. So, of course, you can, you can write to them if you want to, but I know that they have heard this. I know this is probably their number one complaint and the number one thing that everybody wants to know about. And for those of us like me who have a set TBR and I want to read things in a certain order, in a certain way, it is very annoying that I start finding a book and I'm like, oh, it's on script. And before I even read it, because I've read other things before it, it's, it's on hold until the 22nd. So that's really the way I've been thinking of them is not necessarily available soon, but on hold. And since I'm talking about this and my own account, the question, is it worth it? It's yes for me, but that's because I always have other books that I can read. So it, Scribd is not the only place that I read books from. And I keep probably 20 books just in my saved section on Scribd that I might want to read. So it is not difficult for me to just switch to another book if the one I want to read is gone. But let's talk about Stephen King really quickly. So mine are on hold, like I said, already because it's the 20, until the 22nd. Now I do have quite a few Stephen King books in my saved section because I am currently trying to read through his whole catalog and I'm a little over halfway. So there's quite a few books I've already read and there's quite a few books that are already in my saved thing. Now, almost all of those are now pushed to the 22nd. And that has got to be, just because Stephen King books are so popular, I feel like they're just always going to be in the available soon section. And I don't know what the magic number is. Like, I don't know how many books I get to read or you get to read before that cutoff happens. I wish they would be more transparent about that, but I got the feeling that it's more of an algorithm than it is an actual number. Like, how many books are you reading that are new releases? And how many books are you reading that are popular? Because I have read... So far since the 22nd, right, to now, I have read one Stephen King book that I'm almost finished with, and then I have read five or six J.D. Robb books since the 22nd. So I've read seven books on Scribd, and two of those that I was currently reading when I hit today are still on there. Now that is another thing. There were complaints early on about people saying that they would be in the middle of a book and it would get moved to that date. And it would kind of be like, hey, if you want to finish this book, you got to pay for another month. Well, I think there was so many complaints and so much about that, that they do not do that anymore. So if you have started reading a book, and in my experience, if I have started reading a book, it never gets pushed to the next month. Now, I don't think that you can game the system by listening to five minutes of 20 books or reading five pages in 20 books and then saving those and thinking that because you've started them, they're not going to get pushed to the next cycle. So like I said, I don't know what happens if you try to game the system that way, but I feel like They'll be like, there. maybe there's a certain percentage that you have to get to, or maybe not. I mean, you could listen to 5% of a bunch of books or read five pages of a bunch of books, and maybe those will be saved for you. Now, if you decide that it's not right for you and it's not what you want to do, it is very easy to cancel your subscription. 
it shows you on their website how to do it, how to cancel it, but it's very easy to do it. They give you multiple ways to cancel based on the way you signed up for your subscription, whether it was through Google Play, whether it was through iTunes and the App Store or any other number of ways that you have done it. Now, you can cancel your subscription and still keep your notes and your saves and all of that stuff for if you reactivate your account. However, you can just full on also delete your account and then it is gone forever. So that is all about Scribd. I feel like I didn't get the answers that I wanted to have before I started this video. I intended to get the answers about the available soon. Like how many books do I have to read to hit the magic number that then causes everything to move to the next cycle? Or how many popular books can I read? Can I read more of the unpopular books? Like, I just wanted to have these answers answered. And I don't know if they're not answering that because it's not an exact number, like I said, or if they just like keeping everybody guessing. <laughs> I don't know what it is, and I don't know how to find those answers. However, I feel like I learned a lot more in general just about Scribd. And like I said, it is definitely worth it for me. If you guys have any more questions about Scribd or anything else that you want to know, leave it down in the comments below and I will make sure that I answer them. Or if you use Scribd or if you know more than what I said or what I said was somehow incorrect, please let me know down there as well. I would like to know if you use Scribd and if you think it's worth it or if you found anything different in your account than what I said is happening in mine, I would like to know about it as well. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.